The Mac Mini M1 16 gig was released in 2020 and it's now 2022. The question is, is the Mac Mini M1 16 gigabyte still a worthy upgrade for 2022 or is it better to upgrade to the new MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro or the M1 Max? In this video, I share why I chose the Mac Mini 16 gigabyte over the new MacBook Pro for 2022 and might be the option for you. Thank you for everyone that has hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you. And if you're visiting the channel for the first time, I'm Ryan, and this is the Elevate Project. To help professionals like you elevate your remote office with tech and be more confident and engaging delivering online presentations working from home. So I've been thinking about upgrading to the Mac Mini M1 or the brand new MacBook Pro, M1 Pro or M1 Max chip for a while. I wanted to replace my MacBook Pro 15 inch from 2016 with the retired touch bar. Since starting YouTube and playing with live streaming software like OBS to enhance online presentations for work, using the built-in virtual camera, my MacBook Pro's fans was always running at high speed, running OBS and all the things to elevate my online presentations. So my original thought was going to buy a desktop computer and because I am in the Apple ecosystem, I was thinking of upgrading to the Mac Pro. I hesitated after following the reviews of the Mac Mini M1, I started to realize that based on my daily usage, this became the top of my list. My older MacBook Pro has 16 gigabytes of RAM and I didn't feel I maxed it out even during heavy use with multiple applications with my workflow. I wanted to ensure a similar experience and why I decided to upgrade to the 16 gigabyte Mac mini versus the eight gig base version. Especially for a new computer I'm hoping to use for many years. Based on my needs for productivity apps like Microsoft Office, video editing with Final Cut Pro, daily computing and live streaming. Then at the end of 2021, Apple releases the new MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch with the option of either the M1 Pro or the M1 Max that started to steer my thoughts on what I should buy. Looking at the different versions and what I would want made me think about what I really need for today and years to come. So let's start comparing the two and my thought process, which might be what you are thinking about right now if you're on the hunt of purchasing either of these two amazing computers. So starting with the Mac Mini M1, like I mentioned earlier, I was leaning towards the Mac Pro with all the power and wanting to invest in a computer that will fit my needs for years to come. I've had a great experience with the Mac Mini in the past, I had a Mac Mini 2010 that I loved at a time when I wasn't totally invested into the Apple ecosystem. That was one of my first steps dipping in the water of Apple and wanted to try the Mac Mini as it was an entry level Apple computer. And from there, I became invested and went on to the iMac 27 inch and several MacBooks and of course to my recent older MacBook Pro that I have been using since 2016. So my original thoughts were to skip the Mac Mini and level up my Mac to the Mac Pro until the M1 chip was introduced and all the reviews of the amazing performance from the Mac Mini with the M1 chip maximizing performance, especially with Apple software. When it comes to productivity, I personally use Microsoft Office and various third-party apps that are not taxing on my current MacBook Pro and should prove to be excellent on the Mac Mini M1. Other software I use are optimized for M1 with Keynote, Mail, Calendar, Notes, basically the staple apps from Apple, and of course Final Cut Pro for YouTube, and I also use GarageBand. Will this change in the future? Probably, especially once I get more into editing photos. I foresee that within that time, the apps of, or software I choose will be optimized for M1. Will the Mac Mini M1 work for everyday computing? Yes. Will it keep with video editing? If I stay with Final Cut Pro, then yes. So I was waiting for Apple's Q4 
2021 event to see if there was going to be an update to the Mac Mini M1 as that is what I was focusing on going to purchase during the holidays. And Apple ended up only updating their MacBook Pros. Now this was exciting to say the least as I love my MacBook Pro 2016. The versatility is amazing, the power and the updates that make the machine really the one computer for a content creator or at least a junior beginner content creator, productivity work and a solid daily workhorse. Everything I mentioned above with the Mac Mini, in addition, more power, more power and more power to work with today and in the future. Since the iMac 27 inch I purchased in 2011, I have always been able to get great performance to fit my needs for at least five years of use. I can imagine, actually I know, purchasing the new MacBook Pro, M1 Pro or Max in either the 14 inch or 16 inch will easily get me five years of use. The question is, do I need the power? Will I utilize that power? As much as I like to have some headroom in case technology improves drastically or my workflow changes drastically, the short answer is no. I mean, it is a good to have. Now, if you're finding value so far, hit that like button. It really helps and consider subscribing for future content. Now, obviously, there is many benefits to the MacBook Pro over the Mac Mini other than power. The portability, the all-in-one computing you can use anywhere, any place, and any time compared to a dedicated desktop computer, regardless if it is the Mac Mini or the Mac Pro. So my buying decision came down to my needs, my workflow, and what I want this computer to do for me today, and what I foresee I will want this computer to do for me tomorrow. Now, I have not been shy or ashamed about my love for Apple products. I am in and a part of the Apple ecosystem today. Breaking it down, the new MacBook Pro's M1 Pro, and especially the M1 Max, is not the MacBook I personally would recommend today for the average professional working from home, focused on productivity work, and presenting on Zoom. Yes, I said it. This is the best MacBook Pro Apple has created that you just don't need for the majority of people. I believe the new MacBook Pro M1 Pro and Max 14 inch and 16 inch is for the quote unquote power user, content creator, the creator editing and creating content in 4K, 6K, 8K, you know who you are. Also for the people that always get the MacBook Pro, regardless what I say or what anyone says, they get the latest and greatest. Today, they might be hesitant and not get the maxed out versions like they used to because the cost exponentially increases to Mac Pro pricing. So where do I fall? Why did I end up choosing the Mac Mini M1 16 gigabyte for 2022? Well, I decided based on my needs and workflow and not traveling for work as much as I did before. My upgrade decision goes to the Mac Mini M1 16 gigabyte and 512 gigabytes of hard drive space. Do I regret it? especially knowing that Apple will most likely update this Mac Mini in 2022? Well, I will let you all know after using this for at least three months of this video release. What I can tell you is my first impressions. Is it good? It definitely tackles HD and 4K editing without struggle, and it is noticeably faster than my MacBook Pro 2016. Keep in mind a few things to help everyone understand why I opted to choose the Mac Mini M1 over the new MacBook Pros. I've been using my MacBook Pro, my current one, as a dedicated desktop since the pandemic. I invested in a solid monitor, an audio interface, mics, and now a custom to a full keyboard and mouse. My workflow is simple and not overly complicated for me. And I don't do any gaming on my computer. 
and having my desktop dedicated to one room eliminates me from working or being distracted when it's time for family time or time to really disconnect. Is the Mac Mini M1 perfect? No. And if you want to know more, consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you are updated when I upload a new video, one which will be what I like and don't like about the Mac Mini M1 in the future. Now, if you found value in this video, hit that like button. It really helps the channel and it lets me know to make more content like this one. If you think I made the right decision or if you think I made the wrong decision, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe, be awesome, and I'll catch you in the next video.